John chapter number 10, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Let me just stop right there and say, whenever Jesus said, Verily, verily, he's meaning you better really pay attention. Everything he said we should pay attention to. But when he says, Verily, verily, we better really pay attention to it. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door mm, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Lord, we thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you for being a good God, a present help in time of trouble. Father, we're thankful that you do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And Father, we thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, we've enjoyed the good singing. Thank you for the good singing. And Lord, we certainly have enjoyed fellowshipping with thy people. Now, Father, I pray that you'd bless those that are working with the children on the other side tonight. Bless their efforts. Uh, use them in a great manner, in a great capacity. And I pray for those children. I pray for those that have been saved recently, that God, they would grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I pray for those that have reached the age of accountability and haven't got saved, that, Lord, uh, you deal with their hearts while they're young and tender, that, Lord, they would trust in the Lord and get saved at a young age. Uh, and I pray for those that haven't yet reached the age of accountability, that the truths of the goodness of God would be lodged deep in their hearts so when they come to that age, uh, they'll trust you at a very young age. Uh, Father, I pray now that, Lord, you would help us, you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, I certainly pray that, uh, Lord, you'd help your people, you'd encourage them, you'd strengthen them, you'd edify them. Uh, God, you'd uh, certainly enlighten them to thy truth. Uh, God, that we might, as Brother Clint prayed, uh, Go forth from this place and be lights to a dark world uh, 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 that we might be a witness, that we might, uh, uh, Lord, by all means, uh, see some come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Uh, I pray for those that were in our service this morning, lost without God. Uh, Lord, as Brother Donald testified, uh, Lord, you wouldn't leave him alone. I pray you wouldn't leave him alone. Uh, and I pray we'd get a report even tonight that, Lord, they put their faith and trust uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, Father, if there's anyone here tonight uh, needing something special from God, I pray you'd, uh, Lord, uh, deal with their hearts and, God, your will be manifested. God, we certainly pray that, Lord, uh, you'd give the increase. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us tonight, we pray, for it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. In this chapter, we find the door of the sheep. Verse number 7 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, that's pretty plain right there. We know the door is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, there's not many roads that lead to heaven. Uh, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, he is a personal Savior, uh, and He's the one that does the saving. Uh, he's the door of the sheep. We also find this chapter, the danger to the sheep. Look in verse number 12. The Bible says, But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, 
seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, uh, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Uh, the hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not uh, for the sheep. Uh, we have the door to the sheep, but there's a danger to the sheep. Uh, uh, there's a wolf seeking to devour sheep. Uh, and if there's not uh, 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 one that's a watchman, uh, one who doesn't warn the sheep, uh, one who doesn't care about the sheep, uh, one that when trouble see, uh, see, sees trouble coming, he cuts ties and runs, uh, uh, it brings a great danger to the sheep. Uh, and we see not only the danger to the sheep, the door of the sheep, but we see the direction of the sheep. Look in verse 27. The Bible says this. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The direction of the sheep is always to follow the shepherd. To follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to preach on any of them things. I want you to notice a couple of things from these te the text we read. The first thing I want you to notice... I want you to notice the counterfeits. In verse number 1, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. In Matthew chapter 7, the Lord Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody that says they're Christians born again, saved on their way to heaven. Not everybody that says they've had a, a, a life-changing experience has their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, not everybody that, it, uh, in, uh, that uh, goes to church is going to heaven. Uh, not everybody that's been baptized is going to heaven. Uh, uh, friend, the only ones that have gone to heaven are those uh, that have repented of their sins, put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and had their sins washed by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, anybody else trying to get there is a thief and a robber. They're a counterfeit. And can I say, there's a lot of folks that are counterfeit. There's a lot of folks uh, 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 that claim that they're going to heaven, and they're not. There's a lot of preachers preaching a false gospel. And those under their attendance are hearing a false gospel and putting their faith in another way instead of in the shepherd. There's a lot of preaching uh, causing people to make a decision to believe in the Lord. Can I say, it's not about believing in the Lord. The devil's believing, they fear and tremble. It's about believing on the Lord. It's about repenting of your sins uh, and asking him to save you. Amen. We see there's counterfeits. And we find in verse number 2 again, Christ. The Bible says this, But he that entereth in by the, the door is the shepherd of the sheep. We know who the shepherd is. He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the shepherd of our souls. And my dear friends, we see that uh, he is always bidding people to come unto him. And so we find the counterfeits. We find Christ. Now notice the call in verse number 3. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Well, I can remember when he called me out. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm glad that I know his voice tonight. Yeah. Can I say he does not speak with an audible voice? Amen. You listen to some of this preaching around today, and you think, man, God never spoke to me like that. He never spoke to anybody like that, not since he went and ascended back to heaven. He don't speak with an audible voice. But he does speak to your heart. And when you know him, you know when he's a speaking. You know his voice. You know uh, what he's dealing with you in your heart. Uh, uh, listen, I, 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 I don't hear as well as I did 30 years ago. You just ask Miss Annette. She's tired of repeating herself. But there's never a time that God don't speak to my heart that I don't hear him. Uh, uh, we see Christ, we see the counterfeits, we see the call. Now notice the continuing. Here's the kind of sheep I like to run with. Look at verse number 4. And whom he put it forth, or, and when he put it forth his own sheep. You ought to circle that word own. He goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. We see the continuing. Those that 
become sheep of his sheepfold, they follow the shepherd. I worry about folks that say they get born again, you never see them anymore. I worry about folks that say they get saved, but they spend the rest of their time fighting against what Jesus says. Can I say in this chapter several times it says that the sheep follow his voice. Can I help you something? Goats but sheep follow. I've known a lot of goats, Brother Brian. I'd say, well, the Lord laid it on our hearts to do this. They'd say, but preacher. That's going to cost a lot of money. Well, God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You know, he's got it. Uh, say, well, we need to do it. But preacher. Get up and preach real stern. They say, but preacher, you're going to offend people. But preacher, goats butt. You know what sheep do? They just follow. Mm. There's the continuing. Let me just say this. And Miss Nett and I was talking. She was asking me about some preaching. I don't know if y'all bought that Daniel Water CD where, where he's uh, got that song, Who's Gonna Fill Their Shoes? Amen. Man, it's a powerful. I love that song. I love that CD. I love that Field of Grace song. Lord have mercy, I love that song. And that's coming to the foster family near you, huh? But listen, I know or have known most of those preachers in that song. And Miss Nett was asking me, she said, who's that preacher? And who's that preacher? Well, she said, and so I told her about some of the preaching I'd heard of some of them preachers. Y'all think I'm rough. You know, he said, God bless the men of Texas. Now, most people that's been around a while have heard of Lester Roloff. You never heard of his message, Dr. Law and Dr. Grace. What a message that was. Lord have mercy. I think I got it somewhere. But then he mentioned Jack Woods. She said, who's Jack Woods? Jack Woods started a church in the ghetto of Houston. Jack Woods won harlots, drug runners, thieves, murderers. I mean, the worst of the worst, Jack Woods won to God. He'd preach, they'd get saved, and then they'd bring their guns and knives and lay them at the altar. I mean, he, he preached, but he was rough. Of course, you deal with that crowd. You can't be one of these little sissy Joe Osteen preachers. I mean, he was rough. I heard him one time preaching. I'll never forget this. Man. Where's James? He can handle it. I'll go back here. Anybody's going to have his eye plucked out and worked on. Come here, pirate. I heard him preaching one time. Now, you all think I'm rough time. You know, but Mike's hair's turned gray since he's come here. You all think I'm rough. He's in a big way of preaching. And you tell, he comes off the platform. He goes over to the fellow. He says, what in the world are you doing here? He said, you've been sitting there for 10 years. He said, you don't tithe. You never bring anybody in. You never do anything. You're taking up space. He said, why don't you get up and get out of here so some lost people can come sit there and get born again? I mean, that's rough when you go down and you tell people that. And I told her, I said, man, they're rough. I said, they think I'm rough. There. She says, well, you have mellowed some. I told her, I said, I'm just getting old, honey. I'm just getting old. I still want to, but I just can't sometimes. But you listen, there's a lot of folks. They can't handle preaching today. I'm talking about Bible preaching. I'm not talking about mean spirit. But I said I'll say this. I've never known a preacher that preached this Bible that could preach too hard to me. I mean, if he preaches this Bible, and he preaches it uh, in the unction and power of the Lord, he preaches it with love in his heart, uh, he's not being a smart aleck, he's not being hateful, uh, uh, he's not being nasty, he's preaching the Word of God. Uh, I don't care how hard he preaches, uh, I'll hug his neck and say, thank you for preaching truth. There have been a lot of times he's, uh, I've sat under preaching, I've had to crawl on the altar and say, God, forgive me! But I've never got mad at the preacher. But there's folks today, I mean, you just look at them funny, and they get mad. Sure. All I'm saying is they don't have the same thing that I've got. Right. I mean, I just love preaching. I love preachers. I mean, I love good preaching. Now, there's some preachers out there I wouldn't give you two cents for right. because it's all about them. It's yeah. vainglory. But when somebody's pointing me to the shepherd, I want to hear what he has to say. We see the continuing. Now, I want you to notice, if you will, the collateral. And I'll get to the message. I won't preach long, but I'll get to the message. Look at verse 27, 28. These are hallmark verses. 
These are great verses for those that do not believe in the security of the believer. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. He didn't say he gave unto us life that we could lose. You know what eternal means? Forever. I gave unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. He said that no man can pluck me out of his hand. Uh, and he said his Father's greater than all. No man can pluck me out of his Father's hand. Uh, now listen, I'm a man. Uh, that means even if I lost my mind and I wanted to jump out of his hand, I couldn't even pluck myself out of his hand. Uh, I'm glad I'm in his hand. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, Isaiah tells me I'm engraved in the palm of his hand. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know uh, I'm in and I'm in forevermore. Uh, the collateral that we find is that the Word of God is our contract. Uh -oh. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is our contract uh, and His hand is our guarantee. I bless the Lord I'm in His hand. Well, I'm interested in verse number 3 tonight. Uh, just a little Bible study tonight, but a little thought. The Bible says, To him the porter openeth. I'm interested in this porter who opens the door for the shepherd and for the sheep. And with God's help, I want to preach for just a few minutes on the door opener. On the door opener. We know the Lord Jesus is the door. But he says, to him the porter openeth. There's someone that opens the door for the sheep. You say, who's the porter? The porter is a picture of the Holy Ghost. In this a wonderful chapter, we find the shepherd, Jesus. We find that he says, I and my Father are one. We find the Father, and now we find the porter, who's the Holy Ghost. There's the Trinity right here in this chapter. And can I say, you will never get in the sheepfold without the Trinity. Hmm? Well, thank you for a couple of you liking that thought. But I'm interested in the door opener. The Bible says in John 16, Jesus is about ready to go to Calvary, which we discovered this morning. And Jesus is about ready to pay for our sin debt. Uh, uh, he has spent the last three years with his disciples. Uh, he has told them on several occasions he's going to Jerusalem. He's going to be betrayed into the hands of angry men. Uh, and uh, 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 like many Baptists, it went in one ear and out the other. But now he's made it very clear to them uh, that it's coming. Uh, and they're getting sad. They're getting a uh, 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 very... Uh, 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 anxious they're uh, beginning to wonder uh, what's going to happen to us and those sort of things in Jesus like Jesus always does when you're in a state of turmoil he knows how to give you some peace uh, and Jesus tells him this in John 16 uh, verse 13 uh, he, he says uh, uh, in 14 chapter 14 that I must not, needs go away that the comforter can come uh, and then he begins to expound on the comforter in John 16 uh, he says how be it when he the spirit the truth is come uh, he will guide you into all truth uh, for he shall not speak of himself uh, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak uh, and he will show you things to come uh, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you uh, can I say there's a lot of things today being said in churches and in pulpits about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost that he has nothing to do with. The Holy Ghost never brings attention to himself. He is just, he's, he's all God, but he is the silent partner of the Godhead in that he never brings glory to himself. Uh, he is the servant uh, that makes certain that Jesus gets the glory. Uh, the door opener, the porter, opens the door to several things. Can I say that he opens the door of pardon? Jesus said that no man would come to the Father except he be drawn. Well, who does the drawing? The Holy Ghost. 
Can I say, we're, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, and we can quote that forwards and backwards, uh, but it says, not of yourselves. Do you understand that? Brother Brian, that, that means that you won't get saved when you want to get saved. You'll get saved when you're being drawn. When the door is opened. And the door is opened by the porter. And when he draws, and when he drew you and tugged at your heart, and you went down there to North Carolina for a family reunion, just hang out with mom and dad and the family and all that, and you knew when you went down there you'd have to go to church, but you really wasn't interested in church, uh, but he was interested in you. Uh, you got down there and heard about him. I mean, she'd already told you a little bit about him, uh, 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 but when you all got down there uh, and he became big and real to you, uh, and you trusted in him, hallelujah, you got born again, what a blessing to come back home, uh, uh, went to church church with your buddy Clint. Uh, one day you happen to come by here. I believe the porter directed you by here. Uh, say, I'm going to try this church out. Well, you've been here ever since, and what a blessing. But that never happened of your accord. He drew you. Now, he's a gentleman. He don't force you. He just tugs. And when he tugs so much, you just can't stand it anymore, and you chose to, you got in the sheep pole. He opens the door of pardon. Brother Bob, I believe in memory serves me right, about 16 years you was a lost church member. And you just sitting there. But he never left you alone. He just kept a drawing. Kept a drawing. If it wouldn't have been for the porter, you'd still be a lost church member. Because you'd done everything right. You had the head knowledge. But aren't you glad for that track of that 18 inches? He kept a dealing and kept a drawing, kept a drawing. Uh, and what a blessing for the day you got in. Uh, hey, he's the one that opens the door to pardon. Yeah. And your sins got washed away because the porter dealt with you about your sins. And when you chose to be led by the porter to the shepherd, you got born again. He opens the door of pardon. Can I say this? He opens the door of preparation. The Bible says in Colossians 4, 3, Withal, praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance uh, to speak the mystery of Christ, uh, for which I am also in bonds. Uh, uh, Paul was asking that the uh, uh, Holy Ghost would open a door of utterance for him to speak uh, uh, the glorious gospel of Christ. Uh, uh, who gave him utterance? Who prepared him? Uh, who uh, uh, gave him exactly what? what he needed when he needed it was the Holy Ghost uh, there he opens a door of preparation it's an amazing thing Miss Mary you come to church all the time I know you never pay attention but you come to church all the time but how many times have you dealt with somebody dealt with your son Randy or dealt with some family or dealt with somebody and all of a sudden out of you started coming things you didn't even know was in you See, while you're sitting here not paying attention, you really are paying attention. And the Holy Spirit is preparing you and preparing you and preparing you. And He opens the door of preparation. And then all of a sudden, when God can use you, that that He's prepared in you comes out of you. You see, Jesus told His disciples there in John 16 that He would lead you and guide you into all truth. And He also went on to say that He'll bring all things under your remembrance. Now, it's a, it, it always cracks me up when we have the little ones in the church and they're sitting there like Riker and they're eating Cheerios and playing with trucks on pews and all that. But it amazes folks how much they pick up. You know, he'll be hollering amen every now and then. Where did he learn that? He learned that in church. And they're picking up more than you know. They're understanding more than you really know. Who's doing all that? The Lord. He's just doing a little preparation. Now, Riker don't understand what amen means. He just hears everybody else holler and he gets in on it. But what the Lord's telling him, there's something to that. It's just like when children know there's something to about coming to this altar. They see mom and dad come to the altar and shedding tears and going back and find joy. They know there's something about the altar. It's amazing how children know that when Brother Doug's preaching and everybody's listening, uh, it's important to listen to Brother Doug because what he's saying will help them. The Holy Spirit is preparing. He's doing work because there's a day 
when all that needs to come out come to fruition and he leads and guides us into all truth and then he brings unto us our remembrance those things that we need when we need them it's amazing how he does that even when we don't consciously know that he's doing something hmm? he opens a door of preparation can I say this the porter also opens the door to preach the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 2.12, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Can I say, if God don't open the doors, you're not going to impact anybody. Paul was willing to preach anywhere, but there had to be a door open. When he came to Troas, he wanted to preach. He said, and there was a door open. Let me help you with something. I, I do this from time to time. We know that we are to preach the gospel to every creature. And you can shove a gospel track into everybody's hand. But most uh, effective witnessing you're ever going to do is when the Lord tells you to say something to somebody. Because if he opens a door for you to say something, that means he's already working in their heart. And God will use you more effectively and you'll have a greater impact when he opens the door than when you just shotgun tracks everywhere. Yes, we should give tracks everywhere. We're going to do that tomorrow night. But we got a hunter right here. It's one thing to shoot with a shotgun and have that buckshot go everywhere. It's another thing to shoot a rifle. Hmm? You'll hit the bullseye a whole lot more with that rifle than you will with the buckshot. Yeah, we want to get the tracks out there, but when God zeroes in on somebody and he opens the door and he tells you to walk through it huh, and give the gospel, it's going to make a greater impact. It's the porter who opens that door to be able to deliver the gospel. He also op opens the door of possibility. In 1 Corinthians 16, 9, Paul said this, For a great door, and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Can I say? He sang the song, Little as Much, when God is in it. There's never been a time when there hasn't been great adversity against the church. But if God opens the door, Satan don't have enough power to close it. Mm. And when he opens the door, the possibilities are endless. You know, somebody won Billy Sunday to God. They didn't think any more about that than won anybody else to God. They won Billy Sunday to God. Never knowing he was going to become the great evangelist that he was. How many thousands are in heaven because of Billy Sunday's preaching and it's fruit under the account of whoever won Billy Sunday to the Lord. And we could say that about every Christian. The possibilities are endless. You say, I can never be Billy Sunday, but you can be you. God didn't call you to be Billy Sunday. He already used Billy Sunday, but God will open doors if you want him to open doors. He says, ask and you shall receive. You know what you ought to pray every day? Lord, open a door for me to tell somebody about you. If he don't open one door, don't go through it. You can't kick a door open. But if he opens the door, and if you want him to use you, just say, Lord, open a door for me to tell somebody about you. He'll open a door. You'll be amazed how many doors he opens. Now, here's where people get afraid, Brother Josh. Well, I don't know enough of the Bible. If I done told you, he'll bring everything to your remembrance. But you don't need to know the Bible. It helps if you know some of it. But you don't need to know the Bible. All you need to know is him. Just tell people what Jesus did for you. That's the greatest witnessing you can do. Tell them where you was when Jesus found you and how Jesus changed your life. But if you ask for God to open a door, He'll open a door. It's also always good to have some tracks in your, in your pocket so you can hand one out to somebody. But if you want to be used to God, He'll open some doors. And the possibilities are endless. You may not win a thousand people to Christ, but you may win somebody who wins a thousand to Christ. But I promise you this. 
if you don't walk through the doors he opens, you'll never win anybody to Christ. Amen. You know the only thing you're going to take to heaven with you is souls. The Bible says he that wins souls is wise. The only thing you're taking to heaven with you are souls. And I sure don't want to get to heaven and be empty handed, do you? I'd like to go and have made an impact on somebody's life. And I'd like to go and have won somebody to God. And again, I may not win the, the multitude, but I might win somebody who does. There are doors of possibility that the porter opens. Have you prayed for him to open the door? And are you willing to walk through it if he does? And then I thought about this lastly. There's the door of probability that the porter opens. In Revelation 3, 8, the Lord says this, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. The Lord didn't say we had to have great strength. We don't need great numbers. We just need a little strength. But he said that there is an open door set before us. There's the door of probability. The Emmanuel Baptist Church has an open door. With every new home built, with every new family moving in, with Amazon bringing 3,000 workers to this area, there is the door of probability that there are many people who need to hear the gospel. And we don't need great strength, just a little strength, to walk through the door and see what Jesus does. I'm encouraged because he's on the throne. And he's given us a fertile field, an open door. And I think we need to do everything we can to walk through the door. What a privilege this summer to have already had four meetings, getting ready to have a fifth meeting. What a privilege to have some 15 people get born again. What a privilege to see folks getting help and encouragement from the Lord. And can I help you with something? He's just getting started. I preached that message down there Friday night. I went really believing I was going to preach on when Jesus ignores your nothingness. I really felt like that's what I was going to preach all the way down there in North Carolina. Got down there and I was up till 3 o'clock Friday morning. Haven't been in church at 9.30 on Friday morning. I'm up to 3 o'clock just wrestling with God. And God put his finger on it. And then I was wrestling with God. No, I don't, no, Lord, that's not it. That's not it. Surely that's not it. He said, that's it. That's not it. God, go in here preaching Friday morning. Heard four great messages. And finally, then, during that preaching Friday morning, I said, okay, Lord, I'm not going to fret with it anymore. That's what you said. That's what I'm going to preach. You want something different? You're going to have to let me know. But that's what I'm going to preach. I get up and I preached on how much do you want? I mean, they'd heard preaching all week. Heard great preaching all week. Sidney preached twice down there. He, preached, he kicked it off on Monday, and they preached him Thursday morning. It was great preaching all week. Brother Mike preached. I heard it was excellent on Thursday morning. I mean, they, they heard great preaching all week. And I just looked at him and said, well, how much do you want? Elijah was getting ready to go, and Elisha said, I want a double portion of what you've got. He said, y'all want some more? I just, I just threw her out there. I've had a couple texts today from people in that church, preachers in that church, the pastor of that church text me. said, thank you, preacher, I just want some more. I just want some more. Well, I'll ask you that tonight. How much more you want? The door's open. People are dying and going to hell. Somebody needs to go tell them. Somebody needs to walk through the door of probability and say, I can't do much, but here's what I got. Here's the gospel. Huh? Why don't you come out to church hear Jeffrey preach this weekend? That boy's so fired up. He's so excited. Well, 
How much do you want? The porters got the door open. But I'm telling you, we're headed to a time where the door's going to be closed. Amen. People that have heard the gospel and dying to go to hell because they didn't trust the Lord while the door was open. I'm going to tell you something. Depending on this election, <laughs> doors of churches may be closed. Hmm? There's a lot in the balance right now. But right now, there's a door probability. There's an open door. If we take advantage of it, I think God will keep the door open. You know when he closes the door? When nobody cares. So why don't we just go through the door? The sweet Holy Ghost is still doing the work. God's not dead. Why don't you ask God what you can do while the door is open? All right, I'm done. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come tonight and thank God the door was open on you <laughs> on the night you got saved. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That's what the Apostle Paul did. Maybe tonight you just need to come tell him you love him. Maybe you're here tonight and not saved. The Lord's been dealing with you. Why don't you come get saved? Whatever God said, you do it. All right, folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the porter, the sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you that he indwells us. He leads us. He guides us. He directs our heart. Lord, thank you for the voice of the shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for the open doors. Now, Father, I pray that you'd help us to become so sensitive to the voice of the shepherd we'd recognize when doors are open for us to be a witness. And then, God, I pray we'd all walk through the doors of probability and possibility. Help us, Lord, to make a difference having compassion on some. And God, I pray we'd see many come to Christ in these days. Now, Lord, bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks to follow the Lord, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.